The two most creative chess players in the world do battle on title Tuesday with first place on the line. These players are Alareza Ferrugia and Daniel Duboff. Uh, Ferrugia needed to win to uh, tie for first. Uh, Duboff was a half game uh, behind that. And we have a very entertaining game between two strong players. Alareza had white. Duboff had black. Let's jump right in. Alareza begins with d4. Duboff plays knight to f6 and bishop to g5. And Alareza has been playing this a lot online recently. This is the Trompovsky. White seeks to create an imbalance in the position as quickly as possible by taking the knight and creating a pawn, some pawn structure damage. Uh, d5 was played by Duboff. The idea here is that black wants to let white do that, then take with the e pawn then place the bishop on d6 and attack on the king side using these king side pawns. So uh, Ferrugia uh, says, I don't want to go into that position, and he plays e3, a bit slower, more positional approach to, uh, to the position. Knight jumps into e4, hits the bishop on g5, the bishop retreats to f4, and Duboff plays the bishop to f5, already challenging this bishop on f1. The, the square this bishop wants to land on is d3. So by putting the bishop on f5, he's already challenging that bishop. There is one downside, however. That is, this knight and bishop can become vulnerable to central pawn advances from white, and that is what happens in the game. Uh, Ferrugia immediately plays f3, kicking the knight out of the e4 square, and the knight goes to d6. So what Ferrugia would love to do would be to arrange the move e4 to get a full pawn center with tempo against that bishop on f5. He plays knight to c3 to help support that push, also attacks the d5 pawn. Duboff defends it, and now he can't play it just yet because the knight and bishop both are attacking that square, so Duboff would just win a pawn. So Ferruzja plays queen to e2. Now he's backing up the pawn, and he really is genuinely threatening to play e4 and push Duboff's bishop back. There's really nothing black can do about it, so Duboff preemptively plays the bishop to g6 so that uh, Ferruzja doesn't gain a tempo when he advances to e4. And now uh, Alareza castles long. This means he has very aggressive intentions in this game. He wants opposite side castling, where both sides are attacking each other. This is where both players are at their very best and most entertaining. Bishop to e7 played by Duboff. And now e4. Alareza gets that nice central structure he was after, and he's also threatening to win the d5 pawn. So Duboff plays c6 to help defend d5. And here is the novelty of the game. Uh, Ferrugia plays queen to e3. Again, he wants to defend both of those pawns. He wants to keep those pawns on d4 and e4 because they control so many key squares and limit Black's minor piece development. In fact, if instead he played e5, that would actually be a mistake. He gains space, but he leaves too many squares behind. And after knight to c4, with threats of queen to b6 and mate on b2, Duboff would already have an advantage. So he does not do that. Uh, the knight goes to d7, and Duboff has attacking ideas of his own. Uh, he can advance the b-pawn to b5 and b4. The knight can go to b6. So black has some real trumps here. h4, Ferruzja attacks on the king's side, h6. Duboff gives his bishop a place to tuck away at h7. Now bishop to d3, the ideal diagonal for the light-squared bishop. It also challenges black's light-squared bishop. And here Duboff castles short. So he says, okay, let's have at it. I'll attack you, you attack me, and may the best chess player win. So we're going to get the kind of game we really want to see here h5 from Ferruzja, gaining more space on the king side, bishop h7. Now, what uh, white would love to do here is play g4, g5, and get control of this g5 square. But at the moment, black has that square under control. So Alareza plays knight to h3, adding a third piece to control this square, and now the threat of g4, g5 is very real. Queen to a5 bringing the queen over near uh, white's king. The idea is that knight can come into b6, maybe go to c4 or a4, cause a lot of trouble. King to b1 from Alareza. The standard idea when you've castled long and black plays the queen to a5, 
you need to keep a2 sufficiently defended. de4, and now he takes with the other pawn. Remember, he wants to maintain this very nice pawn center. And so Duboff plays e5, a good move, challenging this center and also creating some squares for his minor pieces. Pawn takes, knight takes e5. So conceptually, that's a good move. However, tactically, it turns out that it's not the most precise. And Alareza Ferruzja immediately takes advantage of it with this very strong move, queen to g3. Now, this is a double attack. He's attacking the knight on e5, but he's also threatening bishop takes h6 because he has set up a pin on the g7 pawn opposite the black king, and uh, it's very hard to defend. Duboff plays a bishop to f6. Obviously, he can't just move the king because he'd lose the knight. So he plays bishop to f6, defending g7 and defending the knight, but the threat of bishop to h6 is still there, and Alareza takes the pawn on h6, so he has a little bit of material. But this position is not about material. This is about attacking potential. Duboff plays knight d to c4. The threat, of course, is to play the queen to b4, threaten immediate mate on b2, and having to deal with that mate threat is not easy for white. It, it can be very, very hard to deal with that threat, but Feruzja ignores it and continues his attack with bishop takes g7. This is uh, not really a peace sacrifice, or it's a very temporary peace sacrifice. Uh, Dubov has to retake it. And then h6. Taking advantage again of this pin, the pawn threatens g7, and in fact, at the moment, Alareza threatens mate on g7. Duboff blocks that by playing the bishop to g6. Alareza takes the bishop to g7 and is threatening the rook on f8 also. Um, if he takes the pawn, then bishop takes knight, knight takes bishop, knight to f4, and the threat of taking the bishop at g6 and basically leaving the black king with no defense is uh, overpowering. So instead, Duboff ignores the pawn and plays the rook uh, f to d8, but then bishop c4, knight c4, knight f4, the exact same maneuver is still very powerful. Duboff plays the queen to b4. So now this is his chance. Can he generate enough attacking play on Alareza's queen side? Threatening mate on b2, but Alareza plays b3. And notice this queen defends the knight laterally. That's a very important part of uh, Feruzja's defense. Uh, so the knight goes to d2 with check. Now, here, a little calculation was in order, and Feruzja determined that if he can get that knight off of the board, he could force checkmate. So he plays rook takes knight, not worried about giving up the exchange, because if you can deliver checkmate, the material just isn't very important. After rook d2, knight takes g6 was played. So if black takes the knight, then queen takes g6, and rook to h8 mate is unstoppable. If he goes ahead and takes the pawn on g7, then queen to e5 check. If king takes knight, for example, queen f5, rook h7, and queen to f7 would be mate. So seeing that, Duboff plays rook a to d8, trying to create some threats, but Alareza Feruzja has a mate in two in this position. And I'm certain Duboff knew that, but he actually lets Alareza play the mating process. Do you see the mate? That's right. Knight to e7, check. The king has nowhere to go, so queen takes knight is forced. And then rook to h8, mate, was delivered in the game. And winning this allowed Alareza to tie for first place in Titled Tuesday. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon.